I want you to understand that everything that you eat, everything that you drink, everything that you put on your body, everything that processes in your mind will either be used in feeding the disease of cancer or fighting the disease of cancer. Hello, my name is Monroe Amon Trotter and I have a passionate dislike for cancer. I lost my dear father to cancer. I lost my dearest brother to cancer. I lost my uncle to cancer. I just funeralized last year my dear sister-in-law of 46 years to cancer. And I've had cancer myself seven times. Here recently, I lost my bladder. I lost my prostate gland. I lost 14 lymph nodes, a piece of intestines, and my appendix. I have a passionate hatred for cancer and all that it does. And I have a passionate love affair with Jesus and all that he has done. And I, it, it is my prayer that this message reach an attentive listening audience. Cancer is as ravaging communities, cities, villages, entire countries. And God has shown me that he in fact has an answer to cancer. And it is my sincere prayer that each of you out there in viewing land will understand that God is not done with you yet. Understand that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So without ado, let us petition the throne of the Most High God to do for us that which we're incapable of doing for ourselves. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, it's such a joy, Lord God, to petition your holy throne with the spirit of expectancy hidden behind the uplifted cross of Jesus Christ. Lord God, yes, we understand that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you spent the very majority of your ministry here on earth, Lord God, the very majority of it, healing and preaching and teaching and giving us a glimpse of the character of your dear Heavenly Father. So, Lord God, those who have been afflicted by this dreaded disease, those who know someone who has been afflicted by this dreaded disease, and those who would like to simply avoid this dreaded disease, help them to pay particular, very close attention to all that is said and done. And we pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit would permeate the airwaves, that people would see, people would understand, people would grasp the fact that Jesus is still the answer is our prayer in Jesus' holy name we ask. Amen. Amen and amen. I've got some contact information that is very important for you to receive. You see, this video, this DVD has a companion. There's a workbook between 20 and 40 pages in length, and you must put that in your possession. Some of you may have uh, obtained this DVD through the ministry. Some of you may have been given a copy from someone else, and that's okay. But what you have to do is you have to have the workbook in your possession. You take this workbook, you follow the, the instructions, and let me make one thing perfectly clear from the very onset. I'm not a doctor. I don't claim to be. I don't want to be. As a matter of fact, if I was a doctor, if I was a licensed professional, my colleagues would strip me of my credentials and probably throw me in jail for sharing the information that I'm about to share. So with that thought in mind, I want you to understand I'm just a lay person and I'm a very grateful lay person. Yes, I'm a former high school dropout. I have a college education. I spent 
20 years in the military, many of those years in the medical community. When I left the military in 1991, I obtained a position in a prison in a, a, treating thousands of inmates with allopathic medicine in the medical department. When I finished that, I worked that for seven years, and that was the first job that I really loved and I hated. I loved the fact that, that people respected the medical community, and you'd see in the prison environment, everybody has enemies. The, the blacks against the whites, and the whites against the blacks, and everybody against this group and that group, and you had a, a revulsion towards security and the other staff people. But one thing is for certain, the medical department was always everyone's friend. When you came into my medical department with a toothache and I went in and I cleaned the tooth and I put some clove oil in and I reduced the pain and gave you something for pain, when you left there, Doc Monroe was your friend. And I appreciate that. But after six and a half, almost seven years of that, I, I moved toward the Collegedale area, discovered a place called Wildwood Hospital and Lifestyle Center, discovered a group of people who loved God with a passion and they still do amen love God with a passion and they had an incredible amount of knowledge about the holistic arena of wellness well I spent uh, I through the six month intense program and when I finished it was credentialed in hydrotherapy and massage therapy and some knowledge of the herbal kingdom and anatomy and physiology I had no idea that God was positioning me because several years later I had my first diagnosis of cancer. I had a little hickey on my head that it began to grow and grow and get red and I grew a huge afro back in 2002 trying to cover it up and it continued to grow and my precious two daughters Lynette and Kimberly began to call me the unicorn man. Well they called me that because it stuck out like a, about the size of an egg on the top of my head. Well, we had no idea it was cancer. When I found out it was cancer and they want, they removed it and they told me we didn't get it all. We got to go much deeper and they sent me to a surgeon. I didn't want to go. My precious wife and my family physician pleaded with me when I got there. Uh, they, 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 I waited in the room. They had me take my clothes off and put this robe on, paper robe, and I sat there for about an hour. And then a doctor came into the room with a whole entourage of other people. He didn't even acknowledge my existence. He was talking to them, talking to them. Then he turns and looks at me. And when he looks at me, he touches me behind the ear and he tells them it hadn't gotten into his lymph nodes yet. We can save him. And I said to myself, he can save me. Then I began to ask him a series of questions. I said, Doc, how long is it going to take? He said, I don't know. I said, Doc, are you going to have to knock me out or can you do it locally? He said, I don't know. I said, I said Doc, you're going to have to admit me to the hospital. Or can you do it out? He said, I don't know. I said, what do you mean you don't know? Why don't you know? He said, it all depends on your insurance. I got up and ran out of his office. I went home. I began to gather sources of information from everywhere. The uh, Budwick Therapy, a German uh, uh, physician, uh, Hallelujah Acres, uh, uh, Dr. Lorraine Day, the Gershon Therapy. I got all of this data together and I kind of processed it and I began to do certain self-treatment programs. And I had close friends in the medical profession who told me, Monroe, uh-uh, you need to let them cut deeper. They could not define the margins and they need to go deeper and you need to to let them help you and I made up my mind back then that God is going to heal me a certain way or I won't be healed now that's unbalanced but that was the mindset that I took and years later I'm going to bring it up to date but years later that almost backfired on me because fast forwarding uh, 12 years later up to 2011 nine years later 2011 I began to urinate uh, blood and it continued to develop and it got bigger and bigger and, and my wife began to plead with me, Monroe, go and be checked. And I was afraid. I, I kind of knew what was going on. And I had several other bouts of cancer between then that I won't have opportunity to tell you now, but I'm in the process of writing a book called Boasting on God. And that book on Boasting on God is going to be a collector, an eclectic combination of a variety of testimonies from various people. I will be one of them, of course, because I've got a testimony 
testimony that sounds like a blatant lie all the way from crying inside my mother's womb, being spontaneously born, headed to, to fall on the floor, uh, a nurse scooped me up like a football player, and my testimony starts there, and it goes all the way. How in high school I dropped out, I was told I'd be nothing, and I was a wizard in math and advanced algebra, and, under, and I was a chess wizard, but all of that stuff was to no avail because I didn't have the vibrant connection to God. Amen? <clears throat> and that's the truth. But here in 2011, after I bled for about nine months and I went to various programs, lifestyle centers and other things, and they helped me out to a certain amount. But I was just my mind was made up that God, I'm going to put you in a headlock. You're going to heal me a certain way. And if you don't, I won't be healed. And I had listened to a group of what I consider maverick medical missionaries. And these maverick medical missionaries, they'll tell you, look. Medicine is bad. Doctors are demons. The nurses are their assistants. They just keep their horns trimmed short. Stay away from them. Don't take drugs. It's pharmacia, and pharmacia means sorcery. And I bought into that, and I didn't want anything to do with allopathic medicine. <coughs> While I was incorrect, I understand that God has blessed the medical community and the medical community can be used as an adjunct. And as I was given this disclosure and I says, I'm not a medical person, don't claim to be, but I'm pleading with each and every one of you. Get find yourself a God fearing physician that understands and appreciates natural remedies and willing to listen to you, willing to comply with your conditions, willing to team up with you and partnership with you as you go through the crisis of being resolved from the cancer issue. Now, this presentation today envelops a concept that I call divine healing boot camp. When I went to the military, they took me off the street, a, a wild person from Gary, Indiana, and they began to subtly bend my persuasion. It was called indoctrination. They call it a boot camp where they position you to be a service to the federal government. I'm of the opinion, my dear brothers and sisters out there in viewing land, that we can position ourselves to be healed by the Most High God. As a matter of fact, when you go study throughout the Holy Bible, it's very clear that people, when they approach Jesus, they either came to Jesus with the expectancy to be healed, they were either brought to Jesus with the expectancy to be healed, or Jesus went within their proximity. It, to expect to heal them if they had sufficient faith. So that's the model that we're using. The Divine Healing Boot Camp Lifestyle Program will position you to be healed by the Most High God. And I'm here to tell you, I saw a sign, a billboard sign the other day that made me sick to my stomach. It had a picture of a guy in a white lab jacket with a stethoscope hanging around his neck. It had a picture of a helicopter and it had a picture of a hospital in the background. And the caption said, this is healing from above. That's a lie. Only God can heal. Amen. And back to what I was telling you about Jesus Christ. I'm going to share something with you that some of my colleagues are going to be uncomfortable with, but I'm going to do it nevertheless. There are many people that are combating cancer and they have various institutes and various components and places to come and visit. And many of them charge between three and five thousand dollars. And I suppose that's OK. I mean, your life is worth a lot more than that. But I'm of a different bend. The program, the divine healing boot camp program that God has given me, God has told me Monroe you're not going to charge. I said, what? You're not going to charge. When a person approached Jesus, <coughs> Jesus didn't ask them that they have a sufficient insurance, who was their co-pay, or have they met their deductibility yet, or have they had a second opinion, or what did the pharmacist say, or what? You're in stage three or four? I don't, Jesus didn't handle any of those questions, and neither will I. I'm working strictly on a contribution basis. I know that the God I serve on the cattle on a thousand heels and if you are blessed by this divine healing boot camp and you are impressed by God to 
donate to this ministry so that I can, by God's amazing grace, take this to the entire world, then praise ye the Lord.